whenever we're on some page and we got something kind of cool to share, I should be able to go right up here. I should be able to go Firefox tabs. You should all see my tab. Hey everyone, Michael Crump here. Today we're going to continue a series where we're going to use Node.js and a Firefox extension to send data over to our Twitch chat. In part one, we covered building the API completely from scratch using Node.js, and we were able to interact with it with something called Postman. Today, we're gonna to go ahead and we're gonna build the Firefox extension that we're going to use in the application. Okay, great, so let's get started. So I've went ahead and I've already opened Firefox. And so with Firefox, you can add in extensions that will give you additional functional information. Before we actually build the one that continues interacting with our Node.js script, let's go ahead and just see how they work and how they're structured. Okay, so this is fairly easy to understand. You're gonna have a extension directory located at the top level. Inside that, you're going to have a folder that's gonna be called icons. And underneath that, you're going to have your image. From here, there's going to only be two more files that we need to add in order to get this to work. We're gonna need an app.js. Again, these names are very loose. You can probably change these around if you'd like to. And the last one here is gonna be called the manifest.json. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's create this type of structure on our local hard disk. I'm just gonna make a directory here and this is going to be extension one. And now one thing to note is, is that even though I added in the instructions for an icon, you don't necessarily have to have them. And in this instance today, I'm just gonna show you how you can kind of get up and started with just including two files. So let's go ahead and create the manifest first. So I'm just gonna do code manifest.json. So a manifest is going to describe the extension where Firefox, when it pulls it in, it's gonna have things such as like the description, the version number, what file should it actually run, which JavaScript file that's gonna run. There's plenty of manifest.json sample files that's already out there. Let's just go ahead and let's pull in one that's more specific for what we're going to do here to start with. Okay, and I will paste that in now. And here we go. So let's take a look at this. So manifest version is showing at two. This is in all of their sample code. This is just one of their latest manifest. Now the name here is the name that we actually specified. And also I just gave it the version number of 1.0. The only thing this sample extension is going to do is it's going to add a red border to all web pages that match my Twitch channel. There is some icons that's added in here. We're not going to actually need this, but this is just for a sample. And then down here, it gets a bit interesting because it says content underscore scripts. So it's going to match anything that has twitch.tv slash mbcrump and what is it gonna do? It's gonna run a JavaScript file called app.js. Okay, we'll go ahead and save this file as it is. We're gonna switch back over to where we just left off, and now we're gonna go code app.js, and from here, let's add a tiny bit of JavaScript. So what's nice about the extensions that you build over here in Firefox is, is that it's just JavaScript. So this is plain JavaScript code that I copy and pasted from somewhere. <laughs> and uh, all that it's going to do is it's going to draw a border that's red, uh, 10 pixels for any web page that matches that. So let's just go ahead and save this one. Let's head back on over into Firefox. And in order to activate this, you're gonna to need to type in something such as about debugging. Okay, so if you type in about debugging and you go on over to this Firefox, you can actually load a temporary add-in. So we named this in our source folder. We named this ext1, and then you can select either one of these files. We're just gonna select manifest here. 
And so now this extension is now active in the current running session of Firefox. So how can we go check that? Well, we can head on over to my Twitch channel and we should expect to see a red border. Okay, so we can see here it didn't work. So this is actually a good thing. Why is it a good thing it didn't work? It means we can get to do a tiny bit of debugging and learn a little bit more about the Firefox extension. So let's actually go look at the code. Okay, so here is our manifest. Does everything still look good in here? So we're gonna be looking for MB Crump Twitch. That's just a description. The content scripts does say matches. Okay, so we called it app.js. Oh, look right here. It's still app.js. And I can see there is a typo. Let's go ahead and save that. I'm going to switch back over to Firefox and we're going to hit reload here. Once we hit reload, voila, <laughs> we have our red border. Okay, so that's just a quick primer in creating a Firefox extension. Now let's actually go build one for real. So I'm going to close out of this and we're going to remove that temporary extension and let's head on back to the command line here. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make another directory and we're just going to call this extension two just to keep things super easy. And now we're in extension two. So we're going to create a few folders here. Uh, this time I am going to make a folder here for our icons. And let's go ahead and just copy those other two files that we just had. Okay, great. And let's just double check they're here now. Great. So let's go ahead and open these up now. So we're just going to do code and period to open up that whole folder. I'm going to paste in a section at a time where we can talk about it. Okay, so manifest version is still at two. We have a name here. This time we have a good description that says copies the title and URL of the currently selected tab to Twitch and that will go to chat. A version number, very early, early, early version number here. A couple of, uh, or one icon here, it's just going to be called twitch.png. And now we're going to need to pull in several permissions that this extension is going to need. So what is it going to need? It's going to need the ability to use tabs. So it's going to be retrieving the title and the URL from a tab. A context menu, because I want to be able to right click on a tab. And then finally, clipboard right, because I also may want to copy this to my clipboard to use in another place, such as like GitHub. Uh, the name of the script this time, this is going to be able to run in the background. And I'm just going to call this background underscore script.js. And let's go ahead and add in this next piece of code from the documentation. It says here, it says, in some situations, you need to specify an ID for your extension. If you do need to specify an add-on, include the browser specific settings key in manifest.json and set its gecko.id property. This is just a good pattern or practice that you should be doing in your scripts. So I just went ahead and I pasted it in. Let's go ahead and drop in the remaining of the content. So you'll see here, we actually do not have any content based scripts. We just want our script to be right here available, ready to run in the background. Also for browser action, only thing we have here is we just have another link to our icon, so icons, and then we're still going to twitch.png. And guess what? Our application manifest is ready. Let's go ahead and save that. Okay, so before we jump into this, let's head back over to Firefox, open up this page. Okay, and so this actually shows us if you're wanting to work with Mozilla and the information that's stored inside of that, they have an API that's ready for you to use. So in here, if we want to start getting information from our tabs, uh, we can come in here and here is some sample code that we can get. So browser.tabs.getSelected. Now the reason I'm showing you this is that I used multiple pieces of this site in order to build a fully functional extension. So let's switch back over and let's look at this line by line. Get the selected tabs. So whenever a user navigates over a tab, it gets the selected tab. Let's go ahead now and set up a couple of listeners. And so here you can see we have something called browser 
dot browser action dot on clicked and we're going to add a listener and this is going to be called copy title and URL. Now it's defined here and its purpose is, is that it's going to allow you to create a context menu. Now this is the format that was copy and pasted right out of that Firefox API documentation. You can see it says ID, title, and the context of this is going to be a tab. Then we have one more. So just think of it. This one is going to send the URL, the title and the URL over to Twitch. And then over here, we have this one that's called copy as markdown menu. And this is going to take the title and URL and make them in a markdown friendly format where I could put it in GitHub if I wanted to. This is doing the same exact thing. Just have a different ID here and a different title. Okay, and let's go ahead and let's add in a function here that is going to be called tabs to markdown. If you're familiar with the markdown process, you basically have to format it in a very certain way. And here I've already taken care of that format. I may want to use this to my clipboard. I'm going to go ahead and add in a set of code here. And this is async function, copy markdown. And what this is going to do is this is going to call this same tabs to markdown. And it's going to have an await on a get selected tabs. And then with the navigator.clipboard, I'm just going to write all of that text into my local clipboard. Okay, so great. So now let's take care of the code that's going to help us send that text over to our Twitch chat. That's going to also be calling that Node.js API. So here we're going to go. The first one that we had here was called tabs to markdown. So now we have a new function and this one is just called tabs to text. First, we're going to declare a default options. And so include title is going to be true. How do we want to separate these two? We're just going to have a dash in between and then a new line for a tab string separator is, is that it's going to return the tabs in case there may be more than one selected. And it's just going to simply take those tabs and then it's going to put them in a string and it's going to join them together. And now we're going to have an additional function here that's just going to be called copy title and URL. We're going to open a constant called titles and URL string. And we're going to call the tabs to text that we defined a bit earlier. Again, it's going to write it out to the clipboard. But the only thing you're going to see here that's different is, is that there is this var XHR. So this is going to be an XML HTTP request. We're going to be using post. If you remember, we did this in the previous episode through postman. So we're going to create our own post request. Remember this was running on our local host and we were using API and then slash messages. And inside of this, we have to set a request header. And we are going to just be using application and JSON. And then we're going to send the JSON with the title that is defined right here. And let's go ahead and wire up the context menus. So we have a browser.contextmenus.onclicked. We have a listener here. And it's going to present us with two options. It's going to present us with a copy title and URL menu ID which we can see we define that right up here. And down at the bottom here, we've got another one that says called copy as markdown menu ID, which is also located up here. Finally, we've got two functions here. I've got a copy title and URL, which we added in here. And then we have a copy markdown, which if we scroll up to the top right here, you'll see it there. I'll just put it right here. And the tabs to string basically just gives us our tabs in a string format where we can work with them later. Okay, so the tabs to string function here is going to grab the title and the URL separator that we used up above here. And it's going to put those into a result and return it to the function. So we'll go right here. And this is also going to be an async function. It's just going to be called copy markdown. And here we're going to, again, to find just a markdown constant. And we're going to run tabs to markdown, which we defined a bit earlier here. 
as you can see it's right there all right cool so let's go ahead and let's just make sure we save it again and from here we should go ahead and grab an icon so let's head back over to firefox and let's go to the noun project uh, let's see if they have anything for just the actual words copy and paste and i think actually we'll just go ahead and take this one so this uh this nice little icon here i'm going to select here get this icon okay and there we go we're just going to take the basic download and then for the basic download right here just make sure that that you attribute the creator of the icon we're going to hit continue Let's grab a PNG. Let's save this file. I'm gonna open that folder and let's go ahead and let's paste it. Now, if you remember from before, we actually called this twitch.png. Let's go ahead, get back to work and back over into our project menu. The one thing I think we're gonna to need to change here is, is the actual script. We're just gonna call this app.js. We're gonna save it. And now back over into Firefox, we're going to load a temporary. There is a Firefox tabs to Twitch application. Let's just switch over here to Twitch. We have right click, Firefox tabs to Twitch. And there's this one that's called send to Twitch, but it isn't going to work just yet. And that's because we haven't set up our Node.js application to be running. And then there's another one here that's called send to Markdown. Let's just try this one first. Let's click on it, back over in Notepad. Excellent, excellent. So that's in the markdown format here, and I would be able to copy and paste this anywhere that I wanted to go to. So let's just try one more. Let's head over to Google, Google, Firefox tabs to Twitch, send to markdown, bring this back over here, and there we go. We have the markdown for Google. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So now let's go ahead and get our Node.js server that we built in the first episode back running here. Headed back over to your command prompt. I believe mine is right here. It's in the source slash node Firefox. And I'm just going to call the application with a node app.js. Okay, perfect. So right over here, it shows that it is listening on this port. So now the functionality that we added in, which is over here on Firefox tabs to Twitch. And so now we should be able to run this one, which is called send to Twitch. Let's try it. You should see the message that pops up right over my head there. <laughs> and uh, let's try another one over here with uh, Google. Woohoo! There it goes. Thank you so very much for watching. I really greatly appreciate your time with me today. I hope that helps you understand how you can use Node.js to build an API that then you can tie in a Firefox extension to or anything into. This is just a kind of a sneak peek of some of the things that you can do. A couple of other parts of this video that I'm planning on recording is also being able to deploy that Node.js app into the cloud where you wouldn't actually have to start that Node.js server in order to send data over to Twitch. Right now it's a very manual process. We'll see how we can get this thing better in the next episode. Bye-bye.